Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The DH Effect. My name is Sonia, and I am here with my incredible co-host, Hillary. Our guests today, Rob and Sarah Gardner, are a great example of the decided heart effect in so many ways. They've uncovered what is truly at the core of their values. They've created this really high-trust, premium children's product brand, Juvie, and now they're uniting families around their mission of environmental stewardship. We're going to let them introduce themselves, but I have to read to you a little bit about their company because it made me smile and laugh and resonated so much with us. So ready? We're the delinquents of the children's product industry. We don't eat our vegetables. We always stay up past our bedtimes and we never let anyone tell us something can't be done. So I love them already. Oh my gosh, me <laughs> too. I just want to lean in and learn more. I'm sure that intro is making our listeners and viewers saying, what else? So can you guys start off by just kind of describing your background and how you started Juvie? We have to go back to Boston, okay? So we were in Boston. I was working at Safety First, the, the ch baby on board company that started that whole trend. And I interviewed Sarah for a job out of college. And my boss asked me, you know, what'd you think? And I said, I think I'm going to marry her. So um, we really, at that point, went through the Safety First experience. And then fast forward, what, 10 years from that, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, we, we, uh, were successful in selling, I was repping baby products and we kind of got too successful where I got fired. You know, one day um, I got a fax that you're terminated. And, and so- We had a six month old baby at that point. Yeah. And so <laughs> we, uh, during my whole career, I had always said, you know, if I get the opportunity to do things right, I want to do them right. And I just think authenticity is the most important thing that a company can do and really stand for something. So. We went on this journey of having kids and starting a company all at the same time. And it was uh, interesting to say the least. It was super demanding on Sarah, number one, as a mom, you know, trying to deal with that, then being pregnant. The kids are what, two years apart? We have and three kids that are all two years apart. And at that point, we were starting GV. Rob was traveling to China and all over the United States all the time. So I was staying home and raising the kids. He was raising the business. We're doing it together. Yeah. And so um, fast forward to 2016 and, you know, it was 2014 that I announced I was buying a Sprinter van, a little bit ahead of the van life curve that everybody's on now. And I said, we're going to see the country. And so we bought this van. And then in 2016, it was the centennial of the National Park Service. And so as we started, Sarah gave me a binder for Christmas. And this whole trip was completely planned. All the reservations, we had all the best places to stay in all the national parks. <clears throat> Excuse me, it gets me a little bit emotional when I even bring it up. But it, we had to plan it. She had to plan it a year in advance so we could stay at the right lodge in Yellowstone. All of those things. And when we, we did it, we started doing this trip. We saw all these cool things that companies had done for the centennial. And we said, we've got to somehow figure out how to, how to be involved in this. And <clears throat> so it was an overnight five-year thing to meet the National Park Foundation, negotiate a contract, come up with a co-branding idea that I thought would be nothing more than really putting their name on our products and giving back monetarily. Mm -hmm. And then we did the summit with all the great brands that they work with. And I'll let Sarah take it from here because this was completely her idea where we went with it from there, because we were just trying to like, how can we be, make a high chair or a walker or a stroller, you know, national park friendly. And so take it from there. Right. So we wanted to spread the word about the national parks. So, you know, we have our platform Juvie and we were trying to figure out how do we connect young families to national parks? Um, so I came up with the idea of endangered animals. So we ended up working with the National Park Service, the Biological Research Division, to find out the endangered animals that really need attention. And then we connected them with the Juvie product and we wrote uh, children's books. We designed a plush animal um, to tell the story of these animals to make the connection for young families to learn about them and then go visit them. So I have to tell you, I'm, I'm resonating so much with, uh, I'm gonna take, Sonia's lead. Sonia asked me out on a date so that we could become friends. 
And so I'm going to ask you out on a date so that we, (laughs) so we can become friends. So Sarah, first of all, I have to tell you that I had three children all 18 months apart with my husband traveling to Pakistan, trying to do all kinds of different things. And God bless you because it is amazingly difficult, rewarding, and you are a single parent, even though you're not right. Mm-hmm. It's, yes, it is exactly. so, so I am sending you all of the love and the mm-hmm. feelings and coming out of that, Rob, we wanted to reconnect. So we took five weeks off and camped our way with our six-year-old on down up to uh, Alaska and back and did the national parks along the way. So as you're talking, I'm like, I feel like you're speaking my love language. And when can we go camping together? That's right. Well, we love to camp. <laughs> we've got a campsite reserved next August in a really great spot. So if we want to try to put that together. But now I'm jealous because Alaska is where we really want to go. Yeah, and that's been on our list. <clears throat> as our kids get older, it's harder and harder to do that kind of stuff because of all their activities. But that must have been incredible. Well, it was. And so tell us about this decided heart moment of, okay, this is a real thing. Like, when did this become a real thing to y'all? I I think it became a real thing in 2016 when we were at the parks. I I feel like I remember being at a gift shop and purchasing a product and being like, we've got to do something (laughs) like this. We've got to share. I mean, we were having such a great time with our family and our kids. We were bonding with them. We were watching them reconnect with each other. And seeing things that we never imagined. And I think we just knew right then and there that we needed to share this message with other families. Yeah, for me, it was in Yellowstone at that great. We we had almost a week there. We went to every part of the park. And the first part of the week, I was running around hotel to hotel trying to find an internet connection to work, you know, and try to keep up. And finally, I just said, this isn't meant to be. And it's one of the first times that I really just took a chill pill (laughs) <laughs> and said, you know, we're just going to have to not work for a while and enjoy the family. And so it was really uh, the start of that. And then when you start seeing wildlife and, um, you know, we we pulled over, we had a big cooler in the van and Sarah would make sandwiches every day for lunch. So we weren't eating at a fast food or anything. And Bob went out, Bob's our youngest, our son. And he's like, dad, there's a giant fish out there in that river. And just the, the wildlife, we had just pulled by a bunch of buffalo And so it was really just amazing to see the kids like go off when they saw these crazy things that they had never seen. Well, I have to share a little bit of a different story with my relationship with the environment and national parks. So my, I have a twin sister and I talk about my dad a lot. So everyone, yes, it's another dad story. So we were raised by (laughs) our father um, who had no clue what to do raising two twin girls. Um, but he used nature as our, as our parenting grounds. And I remember him, I was a very scared little girl. I was, I was scared about everything. And um, he used the, the back, you know, we lived near um, a mountain, small Lytle Creek, and he'd always take us there every weekend. And he would say, girls, I want you to climb these boulders. Girls, let's go take a hike. Girls, all these natural things. And I remember feeling fearful at first, but what was transforming within me, and I know now because I think I'm a little bit wiser, but he wanted to instill that you can trust yourself and the world that you live in. I want you to look inward and trust earth and your relationship with earth. And I'm so thankful that he used that instinct because it was instinctual that he said, look at the beauty and what earth can provide just as is. And that was kind of this, this, I called it training, like a parenting grounds as a young girl Mm -hmm. to say, the world is big, but I've got this. And Mm -hmm. what I'm really loving is your alignment with Juvie, because it's not just you said, oh, this national, the national parks are really awesome. And this is separate from Juvie, but you, it's integrated and it's within your mission statement that it's one, there's no separation of that. And have you always known that when you started Juvie and that this was the, the environmental side was going to be integrated? Let me touch on that. Um, I, for a year, told Sarah, we really can't say anything or do anything because we haven't done anything yet. And we immediately went to FSC corrugated boxes, which are you know managed forests. We went to soy ink, which is better than normal ink for the landfills and stuff like that. 
And so we've gone to recycled fabrics. We really, this is not a line, this is not a collection, this is our DNA. It's really changed the way we lived, you know, professionally. And then also, you know, personally, we've made a lot of changes at home. I think we, you know, buy less clothes. We switched from plastic water bottles. We're more, uh, we try to eat less meat. We, we've just made some personal changes as well. Well, it, you know what I'm wondering, really, when I'm listening to you all, I think this experience in the national park, at least at least for me, when I when I think about it, it's really easy to sit in your house when you aren't experiencing the world and nature in the national parks and be like, oh, I'm going to do something with the environment. And so I, you know, use my hydro flask or whatever it is, right? But is there something, do you find there's something different when families get into the national parks, when they see the grandeur, when they are a part of it in, in being connected to the responsibility it is, that you have to help take care of this for generations to come? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, you can step out your front door and be in nature. You can, you know, walk to the local park, which there are a lot of local wonderful city and state parks, but there's something about the grandeur of the national parks when you're in those elements and you see all these magnificent mountains and lakes and um, animals that just really solidifies that connection with nature. And I think it's the, it gives you a size of how big you are in the, in, in the world. You know what I mean? So this year we went to Grand Teton Mm -hmm. uh, National Park, and then we drove all the way to the Badlands in South Dakota from there. And so we went from this incredible mountain thing to this, you know, through the prairies and then into the Badlands. And, you know, we thought that the Badlands would be a little bit, you know, it can't be like Grand Teton, yeah. but it may have been better. I mean, it was really, really awesome. And the sunsets and the sunrises there were just incredible. And they give you an idea of the size of the universe and what we hear here on earth and how important these special places are that, that we keep them for the generations to come and, and that our heritage is important and where we're from is important. So, you know, I'm getting goosebumps as I talk about it. That trip was incredible for us as a family. And, you know, I told you how great the initial trip was that we took. So every year they seem to get better and better. Yeah, every every summer we've tried to do a different one or two national parks, and I have to agree with Rob. The Badlands. I even told the kids when we left Grand Teton, "Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Badlands are not going to be as pretty." And it, I think he's right; it was more beautiful. So, well, those dust particles in the air really add to those brilliant. I mean, it's it's similar in Arizona, right? Those brilliant um, sun sunsets and sunrises. It's so amazing. As I'm listening to you, the three words that come to my mind are humility, purpose, and service. Mm -hmm. It's like all three of those things come into being when you step into it and you're, you're this big and you have the humility of understanding uh, where you fit. But you also are met by this idea that, wait, I do have purpose. My mm -hmm. purpose is to be of service. Mm -hmm. And how can I do that and connect? And I think it's so important. I would love to hear a little bit about, you know, parents are so worried about screen time and all of this guess what happens when you go to these parks? My kids did not pick up anything having to do with screens for the entire time we were gone, that entire five weeks. Can you talk to a little bit about why you see this as being an important thing for families? Can I touch on that yeah, for a minute? <clears throat> well, you nailed it on the screen time, but what I found for us, it was not the kids' screen time, it was our screen time. Okay. And so it was nice. the attention we were able to give the kids back when you don't have cell service and you don't have all of these things. So it's, it's makes the family so much stronger because the kids see that we're changing too. And then they change along with us. And then you have a memory for a lifetime. You know, it's really, it's not something like watching a YouTube video or something like that. It's something they're going to tell their kids about. And that's what I love. So uh, one of the memories I have is um, the humility was one of the, mm -hmm. the greatest things when I was at Zion and, and that feeling of, I am, I am so in, like insignificant in terms of the grand piece of this beauty of this earth. And it keeps you really humble. Right. And 
You can mm-hmm. only hope because the decision, decided heart is for every, every individual. And as parents, you just really want to force that decision on your kids. Like, <laughs> don't you see? You have to decide this. And, but you can't, you can't, right? And what you can do is expose them and have them experience mm-hmm. it. And it was Joshua Tree. Um, we were spending the camping because we do tent camping. We haven't as we haven't done the vans or, or RVs. I think I'm ready for that upgrade. But um, so it was tent camping, and then we heard a zipper, and it was in the middle of the night. It was maybe 4:30 in the morning, and we checked it out. And our oldest, she was a teenager, went up to climb on top of you know one of the the big boulders. And we're like, is everything okay? And she says, yes, I just want to see the sunrise. Mm-hmm. Now for a te- everyone who's raised a teen, we mm-hmm. know that for, for a teenager to purposely mm-hmm. decide to get up in the middle of the morning <laughs> to watch a sunrise, to me, that was the, the parenting moment, like, oh, she's decided. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she's yes. decided that there is some, uh, there's something much more significant in life in terms of this beauty to capture the moment. And I just thought, check. <laughs> so that is, let, let, our, our van is like a school bus. It's not a camper. We just yeah. drive in it. So we love to tent camp. So that's yeah. what we do too. And so we love that. But, you know, Sarah and our oldest got up to go on a hike, a sunrise hike in Grand Teton. And then they got out there and they started like, well, what if we see a bear? Do you know what I mean? And so it's, uh, but it, it, really you nailed it when the kids can do that or they want to see the stars when you get out like that it's just you don't get that stuff in the city I, so I have I have to share a funny one as well it just it's a little giggle is I'm remembering my son we were doing sand dunes we had our we, we unhooked we do have a camper um we didn't used to we used to always do the tent camping and now we do the, the camper and we, we unhooked it and had our, our Ford F-150 and we did some sand dunes. We were like all around and one of his friends happened to call in the middle of it and can hear us and we're hooping and hollering and we're up and down and doing all these things. And, and he's like, what video game are you on? I want to join you. <laughs> and, and Brett goes, this isn't a video game. This is real life. <laughs> Click. And I just have this image of the joy and how like, this is real life. Oh, it just resonated so much. And I think it is so important. I mean, why do you, are you finding that the work that you're doing is, is resonating in creating this connection back, this importance of taking care of our our environment with others? We, we certainly hope so. Um, You know, we, we, we know, I'll just take it to a real basic level we do photo shoots all the time. And we've never had photo shoots like we have on the national park stuff because of the books, Mm. because of the plush animals. It's like, really, they take, it's like they take care of themselves because that, that everybody loves to learn, especially kids. When you really get down to it, they are like little sponges and they want to learn. And so that's, what's really been great for us is that, you know, we can try to have People have conversations around the dinner table that educating their kids on these animals and the parks that they live in and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, that, that, and I'm positive we're going to do that because we're going to stay with it. Um, This isn't something that's temporary or anything like that. So, you know, that's, I'll let you. Yeah. On, On top of just our partnership with the National Park Foundation, I think that, you know, we're a brand, we're Juvie, we sell products, but bottom line is, you know, we're a husband and wife and we've got this great company and we teach our children about nature, integrity. We take all those things into our business. So we just want to know people to know that we're a family. We care about families. We care about people being outside, children being outside. We think it's important. Um, and sometimes, you know, we may not see the results of our work for a long time, but we just hope that other families share with their children you know, the importance of spending time together as a family, having these adventures, going outside, visiting national parks. 
Yeah, I think, you know, that there's that balance of, you know, there, there's a sense of beauty, a sense of responsibility Mm -hmm. for keeping that, that beauty and appreciation. But what's really important for us too, if the DH effect is the sense of belonging Mm -hmm. and I can't, I mean, it is, it is screaming out in terms of your mission, that sense of belonging, it means our belonging to, you know, the environment, our belonging within our family unit, whatever that, that might look like and, and a belonging within a company. And for me, what I'm seeing is that you're just expanding what that boundary is, what is belonging. It's an actual, it's not, not even just these mini micro units, but as humanity, right? If you are human, we belong to one another. And yet, and then we have this relationship with the environment. I just want to celebrate that so much. Sure. If anyone goes to the about us page on Juvie, you will get every sense of what you just said, Sarah, of what you are about. Absolutely. (laughs) How can people, I know. People yeah, and even I'll take it. We stopped at Grand Pico. No, I was just going to touch really quickly at one of our spots. There was an old gentleman sitting on the bench with a Navy hat on. And I approached him and, you know, asked him. And he had been in World War II and was very, very old. But, you know, I said, you know, thank you for your service. I really appreciate it. And it was amazing. He lit up and the kids came over and we ended up talking to him for about, you know, 15 minutes there. And that was one of the highlights of the trip for me. And that goes back to this humanity thing. The people you meet at the parks are very interesting too. It's not just the park, but it's the, the blend of people. So I just wanted to throw that in because it's one of the highlights and I'll let you uh, take it from there, but that's important. No, that's so beautiful. I was, it's funny because that's um, a couple of years ago, I did rim, rim to Rim and, and the Grand Canyon and met so many people along the way. And I came back and, and I told Sonia, I said, when you do extraordinary things, you meet extraordinary people. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is. It that is rim to rim is crazy because they're like cutting that back now because so many people get in over their heads when they try to do that and they don't realize how hard it is. Oh yeah. I try. Yeah. We should say I trained for a while to do it. So (laughs) (laughs) don't just show up, please. (laughs) Um, So how can people, I know people are going to fall in love with you as much as we did. Mm -hmm. And so how can people follow your journey? How can they become a part of your mission? How can they see who you are? You follow us on Instagram, our website. Um, We We've got a great magazine, GV Magazine, and we've got all types of articles in there, including a lot of articles on the national parks, visiting them. Yeah, I, I think, you know, do do what we did. Consider your heritage, consider the country, consider all this stuff, and, you know, try to do the right thing. I mean, it, it sounds, and I think getting back to nature, just like your father, you know, use nature to raise twin girls when he did it, it it all comes natural when you get outside of the rat race of everyday life and it can really give you a grounding so for us you know we just we would like people to give give it a shot read the books look at the, the southern sea otter the black-footed ferret the animals that we're bringing attention to need our help and so we're hopeful that the, that we learned the number one thing people can do is educate their kids about this so they're sensitive to what the world needs. And so that's really what we're trying to do with this is, is make sure that all this important stuff is in the everyday discussions when kids are young enough to really you know own it and make it feel natural. I do want to take some time. I ha- we have to read Rejuvenate. Okay. Because I, I love the wordplay because Juvie and, and you know, you, the wordplay within Rejuvenate. But um, do you mind if I read that? No, okay. please. Well, set the tone for where it came from. Yeah. Uh, it is on the About Us um, page on Juvie.com. It is under the mission statement. So that's why everyone just, if you want to get to learn about Sarah and Rob, who they are as people, who they are as a company, go there. That's your starting point. And they have this section. It's called Rejuvenate. You can't pour from an empty cup. Juvie believes that happy, healthy parents produce happy, healthy children. You can be a parent without losing what makes you, you. And that's so important with our self-discovery with the, the DH effect. The wild, fun, spontaneous person you are doesn't have to stop when you have kids. You just have to keep enjoying it with new partners in crime. <laughs> new adventures await. And Juvie is here to make sure your life becomes anything but routine. And that settles with, we talk about the cup a lot, you know, what fills your cup? 
And what a fantastic reminder, just as individuals, because sometimes we get um, overwhelmed by the roles that we have decided to, or accidentally like go into. And we, we have to be careful that those roles don't define who we are, right? There's always that you that you say, the you that makes you you, and you can decide how to fill that cup. And there, that's just such great alignment between Juvie and the DH effect. And I just wanted to celebrate that. We love that. You have to be intentional, wouldn't you say? I mean, that's, you have to be intentional about how you fill yourself up because, I mean, I think it's Glennon Doyle who talks about that, that if you, it's like, if you are filling up with yuck and all the stress of the day, and then, and then you get bumped, what's going to come out, right? The yuck. So really making sure that you are filling intentionally, you know, what is your advice to, Two parents, young parents, all of us. I mean, yes. are, we have teens, but like, come on. What's your advice to all of us about filling up that cup? Well, don't don't forget why you're together and, and why you want to have a family. I mean, that's for me, you get caught up in that rat race. And so, you know, I look at it, I don't have a cup. I always look at it as a bank and you have to make, you can't always make withdrawals. You have to make deposits. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that, but, it's i'll let you take it take it a little bit but that's for us uh you know they say that the french are the happiest parents and you go globally you know it doesn't always look like fun if somebody's looking at somebody with two toddlers and a newborn you know it looks like work and so the french kind of i don't want to say throw the kids on the ground but they just let them fall asleep on the ground because they don't forget that it's about them mom and dad and that's really, you know, it's such a life-changing thing to have a child that you can get off course as to what your really mission was. And that's, for me, you know, Sarah and I fight that battle every day, you know, that with the running of business and that we really love each other. And, you know, it, it, to do the right thing isn't the easy thing. And then, but I think in the long run, when you have that, look at it as a, a notch in the tree for me, when you look at all those notches, you go, holy cow, we did something. And it doesn't feel like it. And don't judge yourself. We all have this thing where we feel like we're not good enough or we didn't do enough. And that's the worst thing that you can do is buy into that nonsense that, that you're, you're not doing something. Because we everybody is great. Everybody's got strengths. Everybody, that's we're trying to embrace all parents in any way that you can do it. And if just getting in your backyard is what you can do, then that's, it can be life-changing. You know, so, uh, you know, I don't need to pontificate too much here, but it's everything to really try to make mom and dad look like they're a team and that they love each other because your kids are going to take that through their lives. That is, yeah, that's, that's it, folks. (laughs) Hallelujah. Yeah. (laughs) Right there. So thank you so much for your time with us. Everyone, I just want to, again, thank you. I mean, I, I have to say that we're, the word love mm-hmm. is really flooding mm-hmm. my heart right now because that really is where it all begins. Love for self, love for family, love for our environment. So thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of the DH Effect. We really do hope that you felt inspired to take action. One piece of action this weekend um, in, in your life, maybe in nature, yeah. maybe in your backyard with your family, the people that you love. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The We are on, also on um, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, all the podcast um, audio platforms you listen to. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook as well. Don't forget to also join uh, Juvie's Instagram, Facebook. Um, check out their website. Until next time, may you find the courage to live with a decided heart anchored by identity, trust, and belonging. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>